And the idea of yes is more is this idea of a, an inclusive approach to architecture that instead of the typical sort of um, being radical by saying no, the idea of being a revolutionary where you go against something, uh, we, are, uh, we like to consider ourselves evolutionaries where by actually saying yes, Cities and buildings, you can say, are the result of an uh, ongoing evolution of, uh, of cities and evolution of architecture. And um, uh, you know, the art and science of being an architect is to continually make sure that our cities and buildings actually fit with the way that we want to live our lives. There's a slight tendency in architecture that uh, there is uh, maybe 99% is rational, uh, but also maybe pr uh, predictable and, and boring boxes. And 1% is very sort of spectacular, expressive, but also sometimes uh, very expensive and maybe unpractical. And I think what we try to do is make uh, analysis into the driving force of the design process. So, um, with each project we do, we try to analyze what are the key criteria in this situation, what is the biggest problem, what is the biggest potential, what are the concerns and demands from the outside that will shape this, uh, this project. Uh, so then we, when we end up doing something that looks different, it because it uh, performs different. We're doing a, um, a tower in Vancouver which is in downtown Vancouver, where a bridge comes in and splits into a trifork. And as a result, it cuts the site into triangles. Um, and because of a series of setback rules, we can't build more than a very small triangle on the ground. But then as soon as we get clear of the traffic uh, and the highway, we can sort of come back out and the building doubles in size to become a, um, uh, a big rectangle. The, the client has two small apartments at the, at the ground and he gets uh, twice the amount of buildable area and he maximizes the nicest apartments with, which are the highest ones with the best views. So even though it looks crazy, it actually makes a lot of sense both in terms of living and in terms of, uh, of, of real estate. So I think it's, it's these examples where it's like an analysis of what is the, the potential or the problem of a specific situation that we try to turn them into the driving force of, the, of our architecture. In Copenhagen, 40% of the people commute by bicycle. So they are never stuck in a traffic jam. They never have to look endlessly for a parking spot. They really get very quickly from A to B. So the joy of the bike ride through your city actually increases your life quality and your health. It shortens your commute time and it's uh, good for the environment. Uh, in a similar way, because Copenhagen is so clean, you can now swim in the middle of the port in downtown Copenhagen. Most of the time you, you think that sustainability is a question of how much of my existing life quality am I willing to sacrifice in order to afford being sustainable. Um, and I'm very interested in, in ways where what makes a city more sustainable also makes it more enjoyable. As an architect, you have uh, different collaborators within the architecture office. Uh, that's also why uh, being big is a portrait of, of a lot of different people in the office and their contribution to the process. If you can't transmit your ideas uh, to someone else, you'll never get to realize your vision. Because as an architect, you can't do anything on your own. And also, since what we design, it's not going to be my building. If I'm not able to listen to what people say they need or what they dream about or what they fear uh, and translate that into the design, uh, you know, we'll never be able to come up with something that's, that's going to be built. The more we can create a relationship between architects and society, we will become much better at manifesting uh, what society is today and what we would like to be tomorrow.